Hello students today we are going to understand chapter 6 this is jody's fawn written by marjorie kinnan rollings but before we start often instead of rushing to the doctor to treat a small cut or burn we find quick and effective cures using things available at home can you think of some such home remedies for a cut on your knee whenever we get cut on our knee we apply warm ghee and turmeric or any antiseptic cream a burn on your arm whenever we get burn on our arm we apply toothpaste specially colgate a bee sting whenever there is a bee sting we apply a black mud or something else in the story jody's father has been bitten by a rattlesnake he quickly kills a doe and uses its heart and liver to draw out the poison jody wonders what will happen to the little form left without a mother let's start the chapter jody's father penny baxter had been bitten by a rattlesnake he killed a doe and used its heart and liver to suck out the venom from his wound the next morning he felt much better but his son jody felt bad to have left the doe's fawn all alone in the forest he, he went to his father and informed him about the need to bring the fawn to the safety of their home his father allowed him to go on a search for a fawn doc wilson and mill wheel also approved considering that they had already left the fawn motherless jody's mother though gave her consent feared for her son's safety in the forest jody went with mill wheel on his horse assuring his mother to reach home by dinner after some time they reached closer to the place where his father was bitten jody wanted to go on further all alone because he didn't want mill wheel to see his disappointment if they failed in finding the fawn contrarily if he found the fawn he wanted to experience the joy of it all alone as he felt that their meeting would be intense full of emotions and thus personal thus assuring mill wheel of his knowledge of direction and his ability to take care of himself he moved on when jody reached the spot where his father was bitten he found buzzards hovering over the carcass of the dead doe he also found footprints of cats and for a moment he feared for the life of the fawn after an intense search he finally found the fawn behind a bush jody noticed that the fawn was shivering he tried to calm the fawn and tried to establish some kind of understanding with him however though the fawn allowed the proximity of jody he did not move jody then decided to carry the fawn all the way home he first patted the fawn and then lightly lifted him he went around the area where his father was bitten and 
were lay the carcass of the fawn's mother fearing that the scent of his mother would make the fawn restless he had to stop often for breaks as himself being little he was severely struggling with the weight of the fawn and the weeds and bushes that lay on his path though jody's arm had started hurting he carried on his journey he even managed to win the fawn's trust who gradually drew willing to follow him after a point jody felt such a profound connection with the fawn that all the struggles and the pain he was going through no longer mattered finally they reached their destination the fawn refused to go upstairs probably sensing the presence of his mother's killer but jody carried him to his father who expressed joy at seeing the fawn later Jody lovingly gave it milk in the kitchen and enjoyed the fawn's trust and love for him. Here your chapter gets over. There are two morals in the story. First one, it is not fair to kill an animal for its use as a cure. And second, we must have pity and love for the animals.